Hello, beach friends. Today I'm going to take us on an early morning walk over on Sanibel at Lighthouse Beach. Lighthouse Beach is a must-see beach here on Sanibel, and it's very popular with residents and visitors alike. So this time of year means you really want to get here early. And by early, I mean before the sun comes up early. Negative low tide at Lighthouse Beach is like Black Friday sale for us shellers. So I am going to have a little bit of company as I'm looking for seashells and critters and anything else we might find interesting that is on the beach for us to discover. So if you're ready to see what Lighthouse Beach has in store for us today, let's go to the beach. Here we are at Lighthouse Beach, bright and early at 7.03 in the morning. The sun is not up yet, and I figure I will take advantage of this time of year with the headlamp while I can, because come May 1, that is turtle season, and you're not allowed to have white lights on the beach any longer. So, got a couple more weeks left before those headlamps got to go off. And in the meantime, we'll just kind of creep around the water here. Okay, I could tell by the way my hand moved, I knew it was a critter. So here we have a long-wristed hermit crab, all tucked into a banded tulip. Now, I just found out something really interesting about these crabs. Because they have that one little long skinny claw, they can reach behind the operculums of some of the other shells, kind of snip off that trapdoor and kind of eat the inhabitants. So let's take a look at what one of its victims might have been. This is a live pear whelk. So that is live, that mushy thing, that's the actual creature. And then that little disc there, that is the operculum. And you'll see the animal is retreating into its shell. Really pretty pear walk, by the way. Yep, that's pretty. So once the critter feels threatened, it retreats into its shell and it has the operculum to protect it. But that long wristed hermit crab can kind of sneak around that and have itself a little meal. So I just found that out. I thought that was pretty interesting. It is 70 degrees out, quite lovely, negative 0.19. So it is a negative low tide, which is calling all of us shellers to the beach. And here we have a Florida fighting conch with a chitin. So that little bug-like critter eats algae. And it's just kind of hanging out on this Florida fighting conch. So I will not keep that shell. It's hard to say if I would have kept it anyway. Let's see what else we can find. So I had mentioned that I'm not alone and this time of year you probably won't be. Sanibel Lighthouse Beach is very, very popular. It's actually very, very beautiful as well. So I can certainly see why people come here. We're gonna keep creeping around, see what we can find. All right, it is a disc docenia, a live disc docenia. So that's one of the little clam shells you can find down here. But that clam is still alive. Nice, pretty shell. Actually, a lot of the clams down here are actually really pretty. So that is a disc docenia. And this was really cool. All right, so right here are the eyes, and this is the tail of a southern stingray. It blends in with the bottom of the Gulf Ocean so well you can barely see it, but that's what I'm kind of inspecting here. So that's its eyes and its tail, and it really just blends in with the seafloor. From the months of May through October, it is recommended that you do the stingray shuffle. So when you're in the water, you kind of like shuffle your feet around so you don't accidentally startle one of these gorgeous creatures. Now there it is, and it's gonna swim away. There it goes. So that I thought was pretty darn cool. All right, is this pretty darn cool? Hmm. I'm gonna say not so much. So that is a Florida fighting conch. It's a little discolored, a little beat up. All right, fine. It's, it's a fine shell, but 
we're gonna leave it. And this, see, now that is how I typically find the disc docenius. So that is an example of one of those shells with the inhabitant not there. And we have another critter. It's a little sea star. So that's a short-spined sea star. Alive and well, looks real happy to me. Yep, that is a total happy sea star. I'll just say hi and put it back. And I see something else. And I do this a lot too. Yeah, it, <laughs> not a keeper, but that's okay. So I did really, really, really want to find a Wenzel trap. And that was one of the reasons that I came over here because I really had a hankering to get one of those little Wenzel traps. And there are lots of stuff on the beach. So that means lots of opportunities to find little things hiding there. I know there's a lot of other people here, but you don't know the skill of other people or what they're hunting for. Perhaps they're not looking for the same thing that you are. So I just say, you never know, creep around, kind of take your time, check everything out. The Wenzel traps I feel are gonna be a little more up on the beach. So I am gonna to try to spend a little bit of time going through what kind of goodies are on the beach. But as I'm making my way over there, it looks like I found a calico scallop. Real pretty. All right, here we are. Oh, bubbles. So those are little bubbles. Fun fact that one of my viewers told me and I have shared before, bubbles glow under UV light. It's really quite cool. So that's another little fun thing to know about some of the shells you can find down here in Southwest Florida. There we go. That's a decent size. Apple Murex. So that is one of the two types of murexes we're going to find today. And a chestnut turban. Actually, that one's real nice shape, nice and beaded with some little variations in the color, a real pretty chestnut turban. Lots of opportunities for little shells here. Let's see, oh, there's a little colorful moon snail or a gaudy nautica. What other little treasures do we have here? Oh, another little moon snail. So that is a shark eye. Yep. That is a shark eye. And pieces and, and look what we have here. Now, this is an alphabet cone that most likely another sheller picked up, inspected, decided they probably had a better specimen at home, so they left it. And that's what I'm going to do too. And that's kind of how it works the first time you find a shell. If that was the first alphabet cone I ever found, I would have kept it. And that would have stayed in my collection until I found something better and I just kind of keep switching them out. So looking to see what other kind of really great shells maybe I can switch out in my collection today. So far, no lentil traps, bunch of little pieces of whatnot. There's another bubble. Sorry, I was trying to take my time IDing the shells to give you guys a chance. Good luck with that one. I think it's a Gulf Oyster drill. Maybe I still, those in the mouth mouth drills, they still get me. That is a really kind of weird looking juvenile Florida fighting conch, kind of misshapen. And here we have a little button snail or button shell rather. So I've never seen one of those alive. Tiny little things, not as big as they get. And there we have another little auger. So nice little, little shells here to find. And I don't typically spend that much time on the little guys, but I really wanted that Wentel trap. So I'm looking, looking in this beautiful mess of broken shells and look at this one hiding yep hiding right in plain sight so that is another apple murex that one actually is nice it's got frills on it that's a real pretty apple murex all right still scanning up oh, i see something 
That is another chestnut turban. This guy is a little more monochrome in color, not quite as beaded, but still keepable and real pretty chestnut turban. Oh, I see the slippers and the arcs. This guy was camouflaged with all a bunch of other beach stuff on it. So that is another Apple Murex. And this, that's the other Murex, a lace Murex. Oh, that's real pretty. Definitely going to hold on to that. Oh, cool. So these are little, little guys. This is a sharp ribbed drill. They only get a little bit less than an inch. So those are tiny shells. I haven't found too many of those. I really do like them. I think they're real pretty and they're kind of weird because they kind of flare out on the sides. And I see a piece of another apple murex. Yep, packed full of sand. That's good. That means there's no critter in there. We'll just clean that up. Yep, real pretty. Another app. great day for apple murex over here. And that, I think, is a real tiny ribbed cantharis. That's what I'm thinking, maybe, but do not... Go to the bank with that, and it's hard to say. Not as good with those little shells. So it looks like there might be a little something as far as weather going on back there, but the sun is coming up. And here we have one of those little urchins. So that is a short-spined urchin. And I'm going to see if it wants to be there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of wanting to hang out there. So just say hi, and oh, what do we have here? Another Apple Murex. All right, fantastic. Awesome little find. Oh, and here we have a short spine sea urchin, but it has been deceased. And luckily the guts are out, packed full of sand, so it's pretty well cleaned. I'm gonna hold on to that urchin and the apple murex. And here we have a slipper snail. These drive me crazy because they look like so many other shells. Mostly the moon snails, they kind of get me. And that is a slipper. And here is a banded tulip. Awesome. So I do love me a good banded tulip. That aperture is a little bit beat up. I'm still going to hold on to it. Real pretty shell. Oh, more of my little short spined sea star friends. Yep. Hanging out, waiting for the tide to come in. Here, just waiting for me to bring it home is another urchin. Real pretty. That's the same variety. That's that short spined sea urchin. Real pretty. And bonus, I don't have to clean it. I can go home, rinse it out, seal it, and I'm done. So this is one of the prettier scallops, or the most colorful really is that calico scallop. So they tend to be real colorful, real pretty, and very plentiful over here on Sanibel. So I've kind of wrapped around the tip of the island. I'm over by the dock now. Still hunting for that Wentzel trap, but looks like it got me a little moon snail, a little shark eye. One with a drill hole in it. So some other critter drilled a hole in that moon snail. And another half buried Murex. Yep. So yet another one. Right on. Hey, if there's going to be a bunch of a shell, I'll, I'll take it. Apple Murex works for me. Oh, and a juvenile Florida fighting conch. That's actually empty. Typically, those really colorful, strong juveniles are inhabited. They're, you're not able to keep them, but that one was empty. Oh, that's weird. Another Apple Murex. All right. A couple of more pretty shells. All right, what else we got? Another little bubble, the glowing ones. And another button. So that's another button shell. Real pretty, real delicate, beautiful little spiral on those. And while I was down here, a little seagull was uh, checking out the scene too. And I'll tell you why in just a second. And I was curious why. So this is a snowy egret and he was so close and I don't know if you notice the dead fish in the background there, but if you want these guys to come close, just hang around a fish carcass and they might get a little bit closer than they normally would. I was wondering what was going on and 
Yeah, then I realized I was hanging around dead fish. So that will get those, those birds to come a little bit closer. Here we have a lovely lettered olive. Nice and shiny, little bit of letters on there. So a real pretty lettered olive. And this weird thing, so that is a shell. That is a corrugated jewel box. It's actually more evident from looking at the bottom than the top. That just looks kind of, I don't know, <laughs> lumpy and weird. And this is not lumpy and weird. It is a calico scallop. Lovely calico scallop. All right, time for me to relocate. I've kind of done what I can do over here. I'm going to creep around a little bit more. And as you can see, I am not alone. It gets quite crowded down here in the winter. Here we have, I'm not sure if I, what I was trying to pick up, but we do have, okay, I'm not done yet. All right, so here we have a lace murex. Fantastic, and I actually really like the coloring on that, a little bit of that brown and the crevices. I think that's real pretty. And then we have a broken calico scallop and kind of a, that's a little bit washed out. So that's not really, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm gonna leave it for another sheller. I've got plenty. We'll see what else we can find. So the tide's starting to come in just a little bit and you can imagine when the tide is higher, it's really not all that accessible over here. So if you can go at low tide, you're just gonna have more beach to explore. Oh, so this is very discolored, but this is another banded tulip. And it's interesting that the shell faded, not so much the bands. Those bands are really kind of hanging in there. Yep, people, <laughs> people all over but there's plenty of room, plenty of place to stretch out. And I'm gonna, at this point now, walk away from the people, see if that increases my luck at all. Let's do a quick check-in. It is 69 degrees, tide's coming in. It's still negative, so that's good. It is good. Oh, and another critter. So that's another one of those urchins, those short spine urchins, just a wee little urchin kind of tangled up with some beach stuff. And they do actually cover themselves as camouflage as well. So that might be on purpose. Gee, that's funny. Now this is very pitted. That's what we call it when you kind of see those little dots, those little holes all over that shell. So something else is trying to extract the calcium from that shell. And that's why it's got those little pitted holes in it. That's another one of our Little sea stars, want to make sure it doesn't get stepped on. There you go, friend, just kind of get you out of the way. While I'm here, I'll look at this weird color. And this is what was intriguing to me with this one. It's not, that's not the right color. And I was just kind of wondering why. It looks like maybe it's rusted, like it was hanging up against something that was made of steel or something that could have rusted. I don't know. That's a beat up, weird colored apple murex. Now, if you're newer to my channel, you might notice at some point, kind of randomly, I'm quiet and I just give you a nice, lovely shot of the beach. I call it beach time, and that's what we're going to do right now. And we have here, this is a hinged buttercup leucine. And I do suspect that that hole is a drill hole that just kind of got worn away so it's not quite as circular. Now you'll notice there's not quite as many people here and that's gonna happen with any of the beach entrances. There's gonna be a lot more concentration of people closer to the parking lot. And so if you kind of wanna have a little bit more of the beach to yourself, I recommend walking away from those parking lots, you're gonna have a lot less competition and people on the beach. So I came up here, check out the higher rack line. Not all that much going on up there. A lot of those grasses, and I'll show you just a peek in a little bit. We'll see that other stuff that's on the beach. Oh, little kitten paw. 
It's too bad we can't find lion paws over here as often as we find the kitten paws. They look similar, but the lion paws are way cooler. Now, this shell gave me so much trouble. I first thought it was a Pennsylvania Lucene, and then I discovered I'm really pretty sure that this is a channeled duck clam, and I, the animal gets injured, and then it kind of monkeys up the way that it creates its shell. So I think at some point that clam got hurt, it just kind of made a deformed shell, and I think that's what that is, a weird looking channeled duck clam. And then this, it's not really weird looking, just a little beach worn. This is one of our spiny jewel boxes. I just call them lumpy. He doesn't have any spines left, but that is a spiny jewel box. So that's, this is what all that other stuff on the beach is. It's just beach grasses and seaweeds. It's actually kind of pretty. So if you were wondering what all that other stuff was, just a little bit of organic material that has washed up on the beach. Now remember that shot earlier and that looked like there was some weather coming in? It just kind of went away. I'm looking forward to the summer. We get these giant white puffy clouds. Oh, they're so beautiful. And that for a hot second, I wasn't sure what it was. Once I turned it over and I looked at the aperture, I know that it's an apple murex. The lace murex and the apple murex at just that size really do look very similar. And this fun little guy or gal is a juvenile Florida fighting conch. So yeah, they look really different. The, the juveniles, the little tiny ones, and as well as the adults. Now, just a little tip. There is a, a rhythm, obviously, to the waves, and you'll notice it gets cloudy, but it kind of clears up again. So if you do see a flash of color, you kind of see something, just wait it out until you can kind of get a good look at it. You can grab it like this real pretty bright coquina. Oh. All right, so that is a calico scallop and it's got some barnacles on it. Those barnacles are empty. They were critters at some point, but they are empty. If it kind of looks like a volcano, nobody's home, those are okay to keep. And a yellow prickly cockle. So I'm not gonna keep it, but I just wanted to show you. I do really like those as well. So that's a yellow prickly cockle. The oh, sun has come out. There's still only a smattering of things on the beach here. So we see our kitten paw. Or cat's paw. Same shell. Two names. This is a crossbarred Venus clam. That is a crossbarred Venus clam. So those are the most ubiquitous ones. They'll either have that purple or sometimes they'll have like a orange color on the inside. There's no little scallop. It's kind of broken. I'll just, yeah, just leave that right there. All right, what else do I want to show you? So this is also a crossbarred Venus, and that top layer has just been worn down. So the top of the shell now kind of has that interior color to it. Oh, here is a broad ribbed Cardita. Kind of a fun little color on that. So there are shells here. You know, it just depends on what you're looking for. Not quite as exciting as some of the other shelling days I've had, but there still are goodies here. Oh, <laughs> this was kind of like a hot mess of a shell, so it looks like perhaps oysters tried to make a home here. I'm thinking Darwin was at work when that happened, so they probably didn't survive all that long. So we just got a bunch of grasses and some oysters, and then this other appendage, which happens to be a coquina. So... We just kind of have a little bit of a, a mess going on there. I'll just leave that at the beach. Oh, it's such a pretty day. Okay, so at this point, it is 9.22 in the morning. I've been out here for almost two and a half hours, having myself a good old time. Even when it's not, you know, shelves all over the place, I still really, really love the beach. And that is another lettered olive. So that's another example of one of the gastropods. And that is another gastropod. So the gastropods are single shells, whereas the bivalves, like a scallop, that would have two shells to the organism like this. This is a giant Atlantic cockle. So that would be considered a bivalve because it has two shells. 
that envelop the critter inside, and those giant Atlanta cockles make fantastic little shell bowls. So fun. And this is another little slipper, very, very convex, like very bumpy. Just a weird creature. Yep, that is a slipper shell. Another shark eye. Little red and a blue in the center there, and that is a true shark eye. Not one of the false shark eyes. Very nice little shell. And that also, we have found a couple of these today. That is a juvenile Florida fighting conch. Yeah, they are very, very different. Can be absolutely infuriating. This is easy. This is a Florida cone, but it's very old, discolored. Probably not gonna hold on to it, but just wanted to let you know that they are representing here. And this one was, I've never found a scallop this color. It's got like a lot of red in it. It is much different color. I'll show you at the end. I kind of, you know, I'll spread out all the shells and we'll kind of look and compare them. But that's kind of a really odd looking calico scallop. So not every visit to the beach is going to have your piles and piles of shells. But I personally always really just enjoy being here, seeing the sights, seeing the beach, listening to the ocean waves. I just love the whole experience. And I usually find at least a couple of souvenirs to remember my trip by. Now, I didn't get the Wenzel traps I was hoping for, or even just one. But any day at the beach is a good day. So I'm just grateful to be here. And this is kind of fun. So that boat you see there in the distance, that's called the Sanibel Thriller. I have never been on it myself. It is a boat tour that will tour around Captiva, Sanibel, as well as Pine Island, which happens to be the largest island off of the Florida coast. So Pine Island is another area that you would be able to explore. And what do you think? Is that something that you would want me to kind of do and share with you? If you wouldn't mind, leave me a comment. I don't know. You know, you guys seem to, uh, I like the beach and I like shelling, but are you interested in stuff like that? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and I'll just consider it for future videos. And this is my equipment. You guys ask a lot about my equipment and this is all I had today. My shell bag and my little hard container that I put those urchins in to protect them. So that's it. And my backpack with my refillable water bottle and I was ready to hit the beach. So that is all I needed. I'm headed back to the parking lot. Parking here at the Centerville Lighthouse is $5 an hour, unless you have a handicap pass, in which case you can park for free. And I do try to encourage you to get to the beach early because this is the pileup of cars waiting to go on to Sanibel over the causeway. And it's all, it's, you know, almost 1030. So get there early or you're going to probably sit in traffic. So the goodies we found today, a couple of those urchins, that giant Atlantic cockle, a couple abandoned tulips, the button snails, the uh, moon snails, the chestnut turbans, the scallops. See how different that one red scallop is? I just think it's that's kind of cool. And the bubbles, the kitten paws, we got augers, seraphs, of course, the apple murex. We found like a billion. The juvenile Florida fighting conchs. I did get a couple of those lettered olives, the coquina, the buttercup leucine, the drill, the sharp red drill, and then the lace murex. And I'm happy to report I did not have a bag of garbage to weigh. So no garbage this week. Awesome. Patreons. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me. I know I say it every week, but I truly, truly appreciate you. And to everybody who watches my videos, thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Next week, we will be headed over to Sanibel again, but we're also going to be exploring Captiva. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to find lots of great stuff. So I'm looking forward to sharing that walk with you. I hope you enjoyed our walk today. Thank you again so much for watching. And don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you think about that Sanibel thriller. I hope you have yourself a wonderful week and I will see you again next Sunday.